The science fiction story begins in the 23rd century, where many people had fallen far below the poverty line. They hardly had enough food for even one meal a day, so people took up whatever work they could find, no matter how deadly it was. Among these dangerous jobs were underground mining and space exploration. These jobs seemed like normal ones on the surface, but there was a significant risk to life involved. Still, people accepted them in exchange for some money. By this time, space exploration had become extremely easy, thanks to humans having developed an antimatter technology that could convert them into matter and send them to any targeted location. This technology was called slipstream. When a person needed to travel far for space exploration, an advanced chip was implanted in their body. This chip was used to control their targeted location and transfer them to another planet. The entire process took only a few minutes, which meant there was no longer any need for advanced spaceships for space exploration. Here, we are introduced to a man named White, who was compelled to take up this dangerous work to support his family. He had just joined a space exploration company, which meant he, too, would go on these risky missions to earn money for his family. White's wife, Lisa, was deeply concerned. She repeatedly urged him to find another job, even if it paid less, but White wanted to give his wife all the happiness in the world. And for that, he needed the money that only this exploration job could provide. Lisa tried to convince White that she was very scared for his life, but White reassured her that he would return safely. After comforting Lisa, White left for his space exploration company. There, he met many officers along with several new recruits like himself. One of them, a man named Dave, quickly became White's close friend. The captain of the company then began preparing everyone for their mission and briefed them on their target location. But before anything else, all of them would undergo a thorough inspection. It was a relief that White had quickly formed good friendships with all the soldiers, especially with the captain, who explained everything to him in detail. Now, the captain instructed some employees to get ready, as they were about to use the slipstream technology to travel to a mining site for their new mission. The captain was explaining all the rules and regulations to White and Dave, who had recently joined, and also mentioned that since it was their first day, they should stay with him. The captain warned them that while the jump might seem easy, it was far from it. Any mistake during the process could cause their bodies to disintegrate, turning them into antimatter and leading to a catastrophic explosion. Hence, everything needed to be done with a sharp and focused mindset. After giving all the instructions, the captain began leading White and Dave toward the mission. However, suddenly, something went wrong in the other chamber where the other employees were present. The devices attached to their necks, which controlled the mining site location, started malfunctioning. The employees began teleporting randomly to different locations, and within seconds, they returned. But strangely, their bodies now had several injuries, as if they had been attacked by something. The situation spiraled out of control as the employees, seemingly overwhelmed by some unseen force, began shooting everyone around them. Even the captain couldn't control the chaos. When he tried to enter the outer chamber, all the systems went into automatic lockdown. The captain was confused, unable to understand what had happened on the planet they had teleported to, causing the employees to lose control like this. The situation worsened as toxic gases started spreading everywhere. These gases were so deadly that they realized they had to teleport somewhere else immediately. The captain urged White and Dave to set their teleportation targets on their machines and escape the chamber as quickly as possible. Otherwise, they would all die. White tried to change the location, but the meter had completely jammed. At that point, the only teleportation location set on their devices was the same mining site from which the other employees had returned. White, Dave, and the captain had no idea what had transpired there, but they had no other option except to teleport to that very site. The three of them tried to teleport together, but suddenly, the captain's device malfunctioned. Realizing this, the captain urged White and Dave to go ahead without him. White and Dave had no choice. The toxic gas had already filled the chamber, and staying any longer meant certain death. Hastily, they prepared their devices and, using the antimatter technology, teleported away from the area. Tragically, the captain perished there, consumed by the deadly gas. White and Dave successfully teleported to the mining area, but what awaited them there was unknown and terrifying. Meanwhile, on the other side, 
another team from the same organization was shown. This team was a smaller part of the larger operation, and they had just received news of the attack on the previous team. Their mission was to teleport to the same mining site, named Infini, and retrieve important payloads that had been stored there. However, for reasons unknown, the previous soldiers had been brutally killed. This new team had a guide, someone responsible for instructing the soldiers on where to go and which approach would be the best. The guide quickly assembled a team to stabilize the conditions. After gathering the most capable members, the guide briefed them on their task. Everyone was now aware that the previous team had been massacred, but the true cause remained a mystery. The guide explained that the mining site contained critical payloads of immense value to their company, highly sought after in the black market. If these payloads fell into the wrong hands, the resulting destruction could be catastrophic, beyond their ability to control. Therefore, the primary objective of this new team was to teleport to Infini, retrieve the payloads, and bring them back safely. Additionally, part of their mission was to rescue a soldier named White. Since all the members of the previous team were killed, only White managed to teleport out alive, which is why we need to rescue him and take him to a safe place. The captain of this new team was named Jack, and he set out with his entire team to teleport to Infini. They used antimatter technology known as Splitstream, which allowed them to reach the mining site on that planet in a very short time. They began entering the mining site in several groups, but it was extremely dark, and they couldn't figure out what had caused the devastation. They saw no technical issues, nor was there any sign of a terrorist attack. So, how did all the soldiers working here get killed? Jack divided the team into two groups. One was tasked with finding White, and the other with locating the payloads and transferring them back to Earth. The team members searched the entire facility, following the captain's instructions. Some employees saw how brutally everyone had been killed, and, even more disturbingly, the skin of many of the workers had been removed and placed around the laboratory, as if someone was conducting a deep investigation and research on them. We'll find out soon enough how these events lead to further consequences. After a long search, they finally found White, who had been hiding there for quite some time. Captain Jack and his team called White over and asked him what had happened. White said, the first time I teleported to this place, everything seemed normal, but I was attacked by people who couldn't control themselves. Later, I found out through the mining area system that it was a strange virus. This virus doesn't spread through the air but through the blood of infected individuals. This means that if the blood comes into contact with a non-infected person, they'll become infected within seconds. That's why we have to be extremely careful. White, saddened, added, everyone in this facility has already been infected and I was forced to fight anyone who came near me to survive. They had to kill them, and then White revealed a shocking fact. One of the employees who worked in our facility had already transferred the dangerous payload to Earth for its protection. It might have already reached Earth by now. Captain Jack now told White, find the location of that payload in any way possible so our remaining team can retrieve and secure it. White did some research and tracked it through the computers. He informed them that the payloads were probably in the ocean, inside the Bermuda Triangle. This made their mission much more dangerous, as no one who had ever ventured there had returned. Soon after, a man suddenly appeared, and unfortunately, he was infected. He immediately attacked Captain Jack, injuring him and knocking him unconscious. This forced the remaining team members to shoot at the infected man. White was stunned to see the captain so gravely injured, unsure of how to save him as his life was in serious danger. Although the infected man was killed, Captain Jack's life was slipping away. The team desperately tried to save him, as they had certain technologies that could revive even someone close to death. But to use it, they would have to get the captain back to Earth. White attempted to make contact, but the connection wasn't working. Just then, they realized that the infected man wasn't dead. He came back to life and attacked them again. One of the team members struck the man on the head, killing him for good. However, his infected blood spread all around, splashing onto the bodies of the team members. This virus had the property that if even a drop of infected blood touched a healthy person's body, it would start its effect immediately. Within moments, the people who were perfectly normal began to turn into zombies due to the infected blood. Some drops had also fallen on white, 
but he was trying his best to control it. White realized that if he stayed there any longer, the infected people would also kill him. That's why White immediately started fleeing to save his life, heading to a safe location. He also informed the remaining safe people and attempted to jump to another station. However, he couldn't get a proper hold and fell directly down. White was seriously injured, but surprisingly, despite the infected blood coming into contact with him, he still hadn't turned into a zombie. White slowly got up even though he was hurt. Just then, Kent, a teammate, arrived at the scene with a gun and started shooting at White. Kent was already out of control and blamed White for everything, believing that none of this would have happened if White hadn't opened the door and the infected man wouldn't have gotten in. Now, Kent was seriously injuring White. However, at that moment, another infected man appeared and attacked Kent, killing him. White seized the opportunity to hide in a corner. After they all left, White picked up a gun and went straight to the laboratory. In the lab, he frantically searched for an antidote to the virus but was unsuccessful. There was no antidote, but what he discovered shocked him completely. He realized that this mysterious virus had been created right there in the laboratory. Several samples of the virus were stored there, which could spread rapidly from one person to another. There were also some research papers that White started reading. He learned that there was no antidote for this virus. Only those with a very strong immune system could survive. The virus worked much more slowly in such people. White himself was the perfect example of this. Despite being exposed to the infection, he hadn't yet turned into a zombie. This meant White had a strong immune system and was resisting the virus in any way he could. When White read further, he discovered that anyone with a strong immune system could only resist the virus for a maximum of two hours. This meant that White needed to act fast. As there wasn't much time left before the two hours ran out, he saw several parasites and samples of the same virus, created by none other than a scientist from that very laboratory. This scientist worked for their own company, but the reason why he did this to his own people would soon be revealed. Suddenly, a soldier named Menge jumped on White and started beating him up because he thought White was infected. However, White was only partially infected, and he kept insisting that he wasn't infected at all. Menge didn't fully trust him but asked White what the solution to this virus was. White told him there was no solution, and they needed to reach Earth as soon as possible to issue a high alert warning that no one should come to this place for mining because coming here meant certain death. White explained that the way their team members had killed each other earlier was due to this virus. At that moment, another infected person, who was one of their team members named Ben, broke through a mirror and attacked them. Ben was completely infected and kept attacking them relentlessly. Ben then managed to hold Menge at gunpoint and threatened White, saying, drop your gun or I'll kill him White had no choice but to lower his gun. Menge, in desperation, pleaded with Ben, saying, I have a young daughter. I need to stay alive for her and return to her. White also tried to emotionally manipulate Ben by reminding him that Menge was his senior and had helped his family many times. This seemed to make Ben think for a moment, but he couldn't handle the emotional conflict and ended up shooting himself. White and Menge barely survived and escaped to a safer place. However, White noticed that when Ben was killed, some of his infected blood had splattered onto Menge's body. This meant that eventually, Menge would also become infected. White couldn't take any risks, so he decided to kill Menge to prevent further infection. Menge died as a result. Now White started moving directly towards the control room. He encountered a teammate named Tom, who knew how to get out of there and teleport safely to Earth. White pointed his gun at Tom and demanded to know how to escape. It turned out that Tom was also affected by the infection, but he had the ability to handle and resist it well, so he was still conscious. However, it wouldn't be long before he completely turned into a zombie. White pleaded with Tom to take them to Earth for treatment. After some discussion, Tom contacted the rescue team, but he informed them that it would take three hours for them to arrive. White was shocked because they wouldn't survive for that long. This put him in a state of great tension. However, Tom also mentioned that there was a doctor named Grinch who was with them and might know how to create an antidote for the virus. Therefore, they needed to find Grinch and ask her about everything. Meanwhile, Grinch was shown, and her body was beginning to transform into a strange creature due to the infection. 
Although she had been infected, she wasn't aggressive like the others, nor was she attacking anyone else. Despite being conscious, she was desperately trying to find a way to rid herself of the virus, but unfortunately, she hadn't found any results. A little while later, a man named John arrived, who was completely infected. When he saw Grinch, he became quite emotional because, before all this, Grinch and John were in a relationship. John then noticed that he had a child inside Grinch's womb but didn't want her to give birth, fearing that the child might also be infected. She clearly told John that they couldn't do this. John became furious and attacked Grinch, injuring her severely. At that moment, White and Tom were traveling towards Grinch, but a small fight broke out between them, which was obvious since the virus inside their bodies was making them aggressive. Still, they somehow managed to reach Grinch. Grinch was taking her last breaths after being severely injured by John. White asked her what the solution was, but Grinch explained that the virus was very intelligent. Every time she created an antidote, the virus would change accordingly. Now, the only solution was their death. At this point, Tom had completely converted into a zombie and attacked White, hitting him hard. Tom didn't want White to escape and create an antidote, preventing more people from coming here. The ultimate goal of the virus was to keep increasing its quantity and create a new empire where everyone might be infected. White tried to escape from Tom, but Tom wouldn't let him go, seemingly gaining strange abilities from the virus. A fierce fight ensued between them as they attempted to kill each other. In the end, White managed to grab Tom's neck and broke it, causing Tom to die on the spot while White survived. However, White had no options left but to accept his fate because, by the time the rescue team arrived, he would have completely turned into a zombie. So, White began recording everything on a microphone for his family and the rescue teams that would arrive shortly. He stated that he was doing all this only for his family, but if he remained there, the virus would not understand anything and wouldn't upgrade itself. His only concern was to prevent others from being sent to that place. There was a deep sense of fear in White's words as he realized he might never return to his family. He accepted his end and went straight to cut off his hand, allowing a lot of blood to spill on the ground so he could die there in agony. But now, suddenly, we see a strange miracle happening inside the laboratory. All the parasites and viruses present there began to emerge in a bizarre manner, and the bodies of those who had died after being infected were slowly covered with a layer of ice. This layer gradually thickened as if someone were trying to heal them. Even White's blood, which had fallen on the ground, started to return to his body. After a short while, we see White being lifted by all his team members. When White regains consciousness after a while, he sees that all his teammates are completely safe. He realizes they need to teleport back to Earth as soon as possible. White genuinely doesn't understand what has happened and how all these dead people have come back to life. Captain Jack informs everyone that they have completed their mission because the payload they were searching for is fully present on Earth. They are determined to find it at any cost, and the second goal was to bring White back safely, which they have accomplished. Now they can return to Earth. White is confused, so he goes straight to the laboratory and sees that the samples of the virus and parasites have completely disappeared, meaning they must have teleported or transferred somewhere, bringing life back to the bodies of the infected people. All these people began preparing to teleport back to Earth. Suddenly, White experiences a strange vision where he sees several humanoid figures. They appear as mirror reflections, as if the parasites have given them their life and taken control of their bodies. White realizes he has become one of them. The parasites were determined to go to Earth at any cost, which is why they took this step. Soon, Jack teleports everyone back to Earth, and they undergo tests to check for any strange viruses. However, during all the scans, everyone seems fine, but when White's body is scanned, some disabilities are detected within him. White is asked if he encountered any extraterrestrial life while he was there. After scanning his body again, everything suddenly returned to normal and he passed the tests. However, what the researchers did not know was that the parasites were upgrading themselves and hiding so effectively within human bodies that no advanced technology could detect them. They continued to spread in this way, threatening to annihilate humanity. White goes straight to meet his wife, Lisa, because he thought he might never see her again. He was extremely happy and said, I'm not going anywhere without you now, 
But the unfortunate reality was that all these things were only going to escalate because the parasites and viruses had already arrived on Earth. And thus, our terrifying story concludes with this dangerous ending.